Well, that's it for this competition. As you've seen, they fine-tuned, fine-toned, and finessed just for this very night. Let's hear it for all the delegates. This USA 2001, a swimsuit odyssey. All the delegates are wearing swimwear by pieces provided by bikini.com. Here are the scores. One of the delegates gave me some fantastic advice. They said, if I stand at an angle to the judges, I'll look slimmer. How am I doing, judge? How am I doing? In this competition, learning the right way to walk is essential. So we flew in one of the hottest fashion model coaches from Paris, Jay Alexander. Now, for the first time, we'll take you into the backstage rehearsal rooms of Miss USA. <laughs> honey cabbage, wait a minute, Miss Honey Lamb. Walking down catwalks is not so easy. You have to be visual. He has better legs than I do. I mean, come on. Take certain positions on the floor, and I'm going to go around and make sure I'm looking at you and help you work on the things that need to be corrected. It's much more different than what I learned as a baby. Walking was easy, just one foot in front of the other, but it's actually the other way around. Girls, where are your apples and where are your books? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Slowly. <laughs> Bravo. Kind of makes us nervous sometimes. He's very conservative. I'm satisfied when the girls are happy, when you know, I see that something's changed. If it's not 100%, I'll accept 45. I may have to give up walking. You can't imagine how I've been feeling up here, dressed in formal wear, while everyone else was in their swimsuit. Well, I was just about to change into my swimsuit, but wouldn't you know, the delegates have won up me and put on their evening gowns. Does that mean I should put mine on? To begin tonight's evening gown competition, here they are. We begin tonight's competition with Oklahoma.
say. Georgia. Rhode Island. Nevada. District of Columbia. Texas. Michigan.
Missouri. competition. USA. Yeah, well, in preparing for tonight, I studied every Miss USA show in the history of Miss USA. Every? Every single one of them. I think you probably studied every single one of the swimsuit competitions. Well, that was the other night. <laughs> but anyway, I've narrowed it down to three victory faces. All right, three? That's right, yeah. All right, There's Let's the see face em. that says, I knew I was going to win mm -hmm. the whole time. <laughs> There's the, I can't believe that they picked a geek like me face. This is my face. <laughs> And there's the, I cannot believe this is the biggest night of my life. I hope I do not pee in my gown face. Tell me you got that one down to a T. <laughs> Here are the scores for the evening gown competition. And coming up, the final five, right here on CBS. Miss USA 2001 continues. The panel of judges have made their decisions, expressed their opinions, and exercised their rights in my hand. Their choices for the final five. And here they are, as always, in random order. Number one, Nevada. The next we have Missouri. Step forward, Texas. District of Columbia. And rounding out our five, Georgia. to go into the complicated psyches of our remaining delegates. But before we do, let's check in with someone who lived through a night like this and is here to tell, Vanessa. 
You're probably watching this thinking, okay, they all look good, but do they have anything going on up here? If you went to dinner with one of these girls, would they have anything interesting to say? Well, that's sort of what the next competition is all about. Now, the hard part is you never know what kind of question will be thrown at you. It could be anything, but hey, no one said it would be easy. The delegates have spent many sleepless nights around the clock just trying to prepare. Check it out. No matter what lengths these delegates have gone through to prepare, this is definitely the part of the competition where stress levels go up, way up, especially mine. It's best to remain calm, dignified, don't ramble, just be yourself. If that doesn't work, just make it up and keep smiling. The delegates will randomly pick the name of one of the judges. Okay, Nevada, please come over here. And... And the judge is Ananda Lewis. Hello. Hi. Your first question is, have you ever used your looks or charm to avoid getting a ticket? Well, actually, I have. I blamed it on a sneeze, and it actually worked. Yes. Like that. <laughs> does money buy justice? In the entertainment industry, I think sometimes it does, and I don't think it's fair, because we need to hold those people up to high standards. Mm. Uh, and lastly, in a courtroom, are celebrities at an advantage or a disadvantage? An advantage. And I don't think that that's fair. I think everybody needs to be able to go by the same rules and regulations, and it's time that they do. Thank you very much, Nevada. Thank you. Would you take your place on the scoring disc, please? Missouri, please reach in and pick out one of the judges' names for your question. And your judge is Danny Baldwin. Good luck. Thank you. Is the media's need for controversy bad for sports? Media's need for controversy in sports. Um, I guess, can you explain what you mean as controversy in particular sport? I can just read the question. Okay, is, the thank you. is the media's need for controversy bad for sports? Well, I think um, there is a lot of controversy in sports as being role models, and I think holding them to the higher standard that they are, that I think the media shouldn't. Here we go. <laughs> Let me ask I... the second question. Okay, thank you. What female athlete do you admire the most? Actually, I'm not a big sports person, so it's very difficult for me to answer that question because I'm an art major and I'm an artist. And honestly, I'm not a big sports fanatic. Um, but my favorite female sport player, I can't honestly answer that because I don't watch much sports. Thank you very much. Would you take your place on the scoring disc, please? Texas, please reach in and pick out one of the judges' names for your question. Thank you. Doris Roberts. Is there an inherent friction between mothers and daughters? I think there is, but I think it's wonderful. My mother and I have had a, a friction at times, but it's been great, and we're the best of friends, and she's up there rooting for me. Hi, Mom. All right. Has there ever been an occasion when you had to admit to your mother that she was right? And if so, when? Absolutely. Lots of occasions, unfortunately. Um, the most recent probably refers back to the speeding tickets. She's always telling me to slow down. And I can't tell you how many. Well, she doesn't know. I've gotten three tickets in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you do an impression of your mother? Um, yes, but I can just use my eyes. 
Well, she's an eyes person. That's all you need to see is the eyes, and you know okay. she's mad. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Take your position on the story, Jack, please. District of Columbia, please reach in and pick out one of the judges. Then go look, you've got it. And your judge is Ernie Hudson. Is more rigorous testing the best way to improve your, our educational system? I believe so. I believe that when you are challenged, you tend to rise up and meet that challenge. So I definitely believe that, yes. Okay. What weren't you taught in school that you wish you had learned? I would probably have to say how to speak slowly. I have a hard time sometimes speaking very fast. So if I could just articulate and speak very slowly, that's probably one of the things that I would probably do. <laughs> and who's the best teacher you ever had? My best teacher would be my piano teacher. I love her to pieces. It was Candy Jefferson, and she literally changed my life. I played piano, and I love it. And it's helped give me discipline in my life. Thank you very much. Would you please take a position on the scoring disc? Georgia, please reach in and pick out one of the judges' names for your question. It is Martha Stewart. Oh, it's Martha! Do we too often confuse celebrity with achievement? I think it's very easy to combine the both, and we look to celebrities as role models sometimes, and I think as parents we need to step back and prove to the, our children and, and educate the children to let them know that we ourselves as families should be role models and not so much celebrities or basketball players or football players. Is the media to blame for the emphasis on winning at all costs? Um, I think in the recent years, I think it's getting that way. Um, all the hype surrounds the Super Bowl or the NBA championships. Um, it's getting to the point where it's win at all cost. Um, I hope it's not like this, the pageant, but... <laughs> Who's an effective role model for young girls today? And if, and Thank if, you very much. Your time is up. Would you take your place on the scoring disc? What if, you're, what, what, what if you're up there and they ask a question and you go blank and you just stand there in front of millions of people just going like... <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Vanessa, now you've gone through this. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they ask a tough question, I mean, how does it feel? I mean... Well, you know what, it just... I know it sounds like such a cliche, but it all comes down to just being yourself, believe it or not. Just what comes first to your heart, what comes first to your mind. And if you try to answer it right, that's when you're sunk, so hear that well no matter what happens no matter what the winner is going to have to do the victory scream you know that i know that <laughs> find out who is going to do the victory scream coming up final three Then 10, 5, now here they are, the final three. First, District of Columbia. Next, Texas. Finally, Georgia. There they are, the three finalists from Miss USA 2001.
You can just feel the tension out there, not only from the delegates, but also from the judges. I don't know how you guys do this. I don't know how y'all do this. I don't know how y'all do this. <laughs> well, you know, the delegates are also up for another award, the title of Miss Congeniality. Now, the judges are off the hook for this one because this is the only award that the delegates actually choose themselves. Now, Miss Congeniality, what's that about? You just got to be nice to everybody? What's up? Trust me, it's not as easy as it looks. Welcome back. Follow this logic, if you will. The recipients of the two awards that we will hand out will also win the Hoya Chrysler Trophy. So first, the Miss Congeniality Award. The 51 delegates have cast their vote and spoken. The winner of the 2001 Miss Congeniality is North Carolina. For the next award, Claro held a special competition earlier this week. Let's take a look. The Claro Natural Instinct Style Award goes to the delegate with the best overall presentation of personal style with an emphasis on healthy hair. Oh, I get it. It's really the best hair award, is what it is. The winner of the Clairol Natural Instinct Style Awards is Marilyn. Martha, Martha Stewart, that is you. We have lost the crown. You gotta bail us out. You know how to make things. You gotta help us out. Don't worry about it. I have it under control. All you'll need is some potpourri. Potpourri. Two lobster forks, believe it or not, and maybe one or two bay leaves. And voila, the crown. <laughs> I like this. You saved the show. It's a good thing. I'm liking this. <laughs> the top three delegates will now be asked a question by someone that's been overseeing tonight's proceedings, me. Each finalist is given the opportunity to answer the same question in her own unique and hopefully memorable way. Texas and Georgia, please step over to the listening station and put on the earphones so you don't hear the question. Okay? They're making their way. Let's test it. We'll test it as soon as they put the earphones on. And the earphones are on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, they can't hear me. Okay. Here's your question. District of Columbia, many things that were once science fiction are now science fact. Some scientists believe they can clone human beings, should we? Cloning is a very interesting thing because it's a marvel. The ability to clone is just absolutely wonderful, but we have to understand that cloning is something that pushes human beings. Human beings always want to push limits, and they always want to push the envelope. And I agree with cloning of organs, but cloning of human beings I don't agree with. Thank you. Thank you very much, District of Columbia. Would you go up and take your place at the station, please? Texas, your question. Many things that were once science fiction are now science fact. Some scientists believe they can clone human beings. Should we? Absolutely not. Um, I believe that everything happens for a reason, and I've actually done a lot of reading about cloning here lately. It's been in the news quite a bit. And I have faith that everything happens for a reason. A lot of people 
are wanting to clone children because they've lost a child. And again, like I said, I think everything happens for a reason, and I think that's something that, a boundary that we should not cross. Thank you very much. Would you take your place up there, please? Georgia. Here's your question. Many things that were once science fiction are now science fact. Some scientists believe they can clone human beings. Should we? No. I think it's totally wrong. Um, we're going way beyond nature. We're going on to way far beyond limits that we should even step into. And it's unethical. And we should s consider going back to more simpler times and maybe concentrating on just being one and <laughs> not worrying about so many others. Thank you very much. Would you take your place up there, please? And now, once again, the top three delegates for Miss USA. District of Columbia. Georgia. We'll be right back with the one that captures the crowd. Yes, never in a million years could we have done Miss USA 2001 without the help of a few people that we'd like to give a big thanks to right now. The Mayor of Gary, Indiana, the Honorable Scott Elkin. <laughs> President of the Gary Common Council, Councilman at Large, Roy Pratt. Chair of the Executive Host City Committee, Deputy Mayor, Suzette Rags. And the co-owner, along with CBS, of the Miss Universe organization, Donald Trump. And now, Last year's Miss USA, Lynette Cole, let's hear her thoughts as she takes her final walk as Miss USA. Being crowned Miss USA last February was a lifelong dream come true. Throughout this year, I have had the pleasure to work with various charities, including the Carolyn Baldwin Breast Cancer Research Fund, the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund, and the Gildas Club. But my greatest personal accomplishment has been the adoption advocacy work I've been so fortunate to be involved in. I am grateful and humbled by these experiences. I am not only taking with me many of life's lessons, but many friends as well. Ashley, Susie, Emily, and Lauren, thank you for all your encouragement throughout this year. To my parents, family, and Kim Greenwood, I love you all dearly. I could not have achieved this dream without you. Finally, to all my friends and family in Columbia, Tennessee, thank you for all your love and support you have shown me this past year. I will always hold these memories as a gift close to my heart. And now, little Mark Ward of the accounting firm of Ernest & Young is handing me the name of the woman who will win the crown of Miss USA 2001. We will begin with the second runner-up, Georgia. Yeah. Ladies, please join me in the winner's circle down here.
If for any reason the new Miss USA can't fulfill her duties, the first runner-up will take over. The first runner-up is District of Columbia. That means the new Miss USA is Texas! That's it. Thank you to Tommy Davidson, Vanessa Manillo, Lara Dutta, the Warren Brothers, Lara Fabian, David and Jared, and to Gary, Indiana, good night. Good night. Good night, Gary, Indiana.